Hey there, model fans. Welcome back to Richard's Toy Room. Today we've got this 1969 Barracuda by MPC. I'm going to assume that it was also originally released by MPC, probably back in 69. I've had this one for a while. Um, you can see I picked it up at Hobby Lobby on clearance, but I think I bought this like, whew, I'm going to guess, uh, maybe two years ago. <laughs> I forget exactly. But um, it's it's come up in the queue a couple of times and I've almost built it, but then I thought, mm, yeah, I don't really feel like it. I'm going to do a different kit. And so now I decided it's finally time to get this one on the table and get it done. So, uh, as you can see, this is this is by Round Two, who of course bought up all the uh, all the old model companies, you know, AMT, NPC, Lindbergh, you name it, except for Ravel and Monogram. And they re-release kits on a regular basis. That's why this one has the Retro Deluxe sticker on the packaging here, because it says it's an enhanced reissue featuring the mini display box, which I really don't care for at all. Just a waste of money as far as I'm concerned for them to put it in there. Pad printed tires, which I love. And vintage packaging, which I also love because this would be like probably, just looking at it, it looks like it's, I don't think this is probably the original one, but it could be, but maybe from the 70s. So uh, on the side of the box here, they show you the typical 70s uh, accessories and uh, features that come in the kit here. You can see for yourself. And as usual on these, the uh, sides are the same as the top, or the ends, I should say. And the other side shows a uh, custom and uh, the stock version, I think. Yeah, custom stock. And of course the top is showing like the hot rod or whatever they want to call it, street rod or something version. So let's take a look at the instructions. Well, the first thing I noticed when I just leafed through these instructions briefly was how sparse they are. I do like that it's in uh, booklet form where the pages open like this instead of one big long sheet. I hate that. But what you see here, see this little section down here with the engine? That's it. That's the whole kit right there. The back page is just for your custom and drag racing uh, options instead of stock. I mean, there's not much to this kit. I'm surprised it has an engine. Um, and as I go through the parts, you'll see what I mean when I when I show you a couple of things. Which is weird because there are a couple of things in here that I'll point out that um, being such a lower parts count kit, you wouldn't really expect to see. But all right, anyway. So, back to the beginning, basically here's your engine, it's got a decent number of parts on it. And uh, it gives you a uh, paint color chart here. Um, don't always completely trust this, but when I can't find the information somewhere online, I'll usually end up going with this as a default, so it's nice to have. And they pointed out a lot on here that all these letters that you see next to the parts correspond to one of these here. And moving on, you got the, um, you, know, you put the interior together. And I was looking at this and saying, why does this have a separate back of the back seat? Well, it's kind of cool. When I was looking at the parts, I, I noticed it folds down like a station wagon. Like, it, it, I'm, of course, then again, I'm not sure how you're going to actually get in there and do it when the body's together. It's not a convertible and you would have to, have pretty small fingers to get in there and do it. I, mean, I guess maybe you could just tilt the car and it should do it, but <laughs> either way, it's kind of a neat little feature that they put in there. Um, then uh, <clears throat> here's your drag interior here, with a little bit more parts with a lot of extra optional stuff. Moves down to your putting your tires on their chassis. Um, Interestingly, in the picture, they show a rear metal axle, and then they show what looks to be pins similar to the Ravel kit, 
but they look like they maybe made a plastic here. Now, I did not notice those in when I just briefly leafed through the, the parts trees, but what I did notice was there are actually two metal axles included in the kit, so if I can get the metal axles through the holes, I'm going to use those because I hate the, the pin version. They never, um, they never seem to sit. They're wobbly is what I'm trying to say. And let's see, you just move on over here to basically throwing on the grill and the taillights, the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the glass. Pop the interior in, throw on your bumpers and your hood. Bolt there, or not bolt, but uh, attach the uh, chassis to the body and you're done. Unless you want to do some custom work, which I don't. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So let's continue with the paperwork that comes in the kit. Here's the little facsimile of the, the box that they give you. I never use these. I've got a stack of them now. I should probably sell them on eBay or something. I'm sure somebody would probably like to have them. And then your decals. They give you a lot of decals. And... Um, I will probably use almost none of these. Now I will use a set of license plates. What's kind of cool in this one, you can't really probably tell from there, but these are vintage Arizona license plates. So that's cool because I live in Arizona. So I will definitely be using those. Assuming there's some place to put them on the car. <laughs> Sometimes they give you license plate decals and no license plate brackets or anything. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, where there's a will, there's a way. Sometimes I have extras. Like, matter of fact, sitting right here in front of me, I've got an extra from another kit that uh, I had already put the decal on, but then I realized there was nowhere to attach it on the car. There wasn't any uh, mounting place for it that uh, looked good, so I just ended up holding on to it, and I will uh, use that on another vehicle where it doesn't come with one. And a lot of racing decals, which I won't use. Now, these ones down here interest me. You've got these uh, rally stripes or whatever they are. Now, it would appear, since they give you a black and a white, and this one looks blue to me, but I'd have to look really close in the light, but I'm assuming this is black as well to match this one, because this one's white. But if these are something that were available on a stock Barracuda, I may use some or all of those, however they, uh, however they apply. But if not, then pretty much all I'll be using on here are the license plates. Moving on to the clear parts, which are always fun to try to show. Um, here you got your, I don't even know if you can see this. You got your one piece glass for the front and the back with the attachments in the middle here. My stepfather, who got me into modeling when I was a kid, actually told me if you cut these off, then, you know, of course, if you're looking into the car, you're going to see these on the roof. Then you would not see these because uh, you've basically made them into two separate pieces. And I've gotten lazy, and a lot of times I won't do that, um, and I'll just pop it in the way it is. <laughs> Sometimes they're just like, eh, I don't really care. And these are custom parts here. It doesn't look like these are probably used for anything on the car as far as I can tell um, in a stock version and then of course you got your beautiful full-length taillight which very reminiscent to me of the uh, recent charger I'm not sure if they're still using this similar wrap around full-length taillight but um, that's gonna look pretty cool if it comes out good so let's get to the white parts I mean, there's enough of them, but it's not like they're overflowing. So you got uh, basically six trees of white parts, not including the uh, body and chassis. So let's take a peek at those. You've got your engine parts here. It looks like you got a little radiator, and these are your uh, little axle, front axle uh, fill-ins. So you. you do different uh, heights of your suspension. 
here obviously is your hood you've got the uh, she, uh, you've got the option to cut this out for a hood scoop that uh, score or uh, indented portion there and you also have like the little hinges built in so that you can pivot the hood up without it having to uh, come off firewall seat belts Oh, and they give you another, I guess you can do the rear uh, suspension as well, because they give you four of these uh, axle inserts. So you can adjust the front and rear suspension, make it like low rider or, you know, sitting like high in the back and low in the front or obviously stock. These are part of your custom seats, which go with these. They, they're inserts go in here. Well, that might be upside down, but you get the idea. And, well, that's your radiator, front radiator support area. Some more engine parts. I don't know if this is a spoiler or if this is part of the rear valance. And you got some, those look like maybe some cherry bomb mufflers. Surprisingly, some outside mirrors here. I'm not 100% sure what these other parts are. Here's your stock front seat, all one piece surprisingly. And then the back seat, which is two pieces. And if you can see on here, they've got little pivot hinges, like I had mentioned earlier, so that the seat can fold down kind of like a station wagon, have that whole cargo uh, area in the back. This looks like your uh, rear valance for under the tail light. This is probably the front one here, and I believe this is a custom um, console. Oops. Here's your dashboard. There's actually a lot of detail on this dashboard, but unfortunately they don't give you any decals, so everything's going to have to be uh, done by hand to uh, bring out any sort of uh, accents on there. Looks like a radiator hose. Some wheel backs here, a uh, roll cage, and then you got your, I don't know if this will show up very well on the camera here, but the steering wheel is really warped. So I'm probably going to have to heat that up and straighten it out because, it I mean, it, it's a wreck. <laughs> I've never seen one that bad. And finally, on the trees, you've got, I'm thinking these are scoops maybe for the side of the car here. This is obviously a giant hood scoop. This looks like part of a center console or maybe an optional one. And I'm thinking this is probably a filler for where you would uh, delete the back seat. If you're uh, maybe making like a race car, stock car, whatever they call it. And I'm not 100% sure what this part is. Oh, you know what I think that is? I think that is the little uh, part that goes in between the taillights in the rear bumper that the taillights go around that's uh, the insert then you got your two metal axles nothing spectacular to look at there I'll leave them in the bag so they don't get lost and you got your tires I'll bring these out for I forget sometimes I put them off to the side and I forget to show them and then I have to shoot it separately these are actually pretty nice the pad printed ones you got these two slicks and these are like slick slick slicks there's no tread on them uh, nothing on the back, but on the front, they are marked. What the hell does that say? Oh, they say Race Master on them. You probably can't make that out on the video, but see what you can see. But they're very smushy. And uh, these are really smushy. These are hollow as well. They're not solid tires. These are... No name tires, but they're white wall on one side and black wall on the other as usual. I will probably use the white walls. I tend to use white walls whenever I can. I guess it just depends on uh, what I see when I look these up to figure out what color I'm going to paint it and um, see if I like it better with the white wall or without. I mean, being a Barracuda, I mean, there is a possibility I could do black wall, but being a 60s car, 
White walls were very popular then, so there's a good chance I'll use the white walls. Let's take a look at the chrome before we look at the body. You get one little chrome tree and one large chrome tree. Geez, I almost swear there's as many chrome parts as there are white parts in the kit. Maybe not quite, but you get, uh, as you can see here, three different sets of wheels you can use. Now, I believe these are maybe supposed to be hubcaps. These are the factory ones. They're probably pretty hard to see because everything's so chromey. And I have, obviously I haven't done a uh, black wash or done any sort of uh, detailing on them. So you can't really see anything on them that very, very well. And these look like they're probably the racing rims. And I'm guessing these are probably the custom ones. They look kind of like uh, Craigers. So you got your front, uh, your uh, bumpers on here, and you got your front. You know, this looks like the custom one here. Here's the factory front grill. Headlights mold in. Don't really care for that. Um, I'm not sure if any of these chrome engine parts are stock. If they are, they'll probably be painted. Or they may be all just custom and there may be duplicates. Oh, here's your license plate frame. So I guess it probably will be getting the license plates that I mentioned. Um, that's about it. Don't really see too much more on there. So let's take a look at the white body. So you got three pieces left. You've got the body, the interior pan, and the chassis. So on the chassis, Here's why you have no parts in this kit. <laughs> You've got molded in the submember, the control arms, the exhaust system, the gas tank, the rear axle. <laughs> You've got, there's nothing to put on there. That's about it. Just detailing on that. Um, surprisingly, you got some detail on the door panels on this even though they're all molded as one bucket got some seat detailing in there they do uh, mold in the back or the bottom portion of the rear seat the carpet has a little bit of texture but it also has the mold push out marks and finally the body everything looks Pretty good here, I think, as far as I can tell. Nothing looks warped or un or mismolded or anything along that line. I don't see a lot of mold lines. I mean, there's obviously some, but nothing too excessive. It looks like it should be fairly easy to clean up. Very, very, very tiny bit of flash on the front fenders here. Um, there's actually even some detailing on the headliner. I mean, you can see they got the outline of the... Maybe you can't see them. But anyway, the uh, sun visors and some ribs for the, for the headliner. And they do have some... Um, like Barracuda molded in here, so that's gonna, it's really tiny, so that'll be fun to try to pick out. And that's Alan yeah, Plymouth, it looks like maybe on the front here above the, the driver's side headlight. That's about it. So there's your kit. Hopefully, it won't be a troublemaking kit, and um, we'll see you on the update. Okay, so welcome to the update. Um, I kind of almost forgot to do it. I got so involved in, in the build and uh, going through some of the issues with this that uh, I started, uh, I just kept going on with the car. So anyway, um, well, let's start with the, the good, I guess. And then we'll go on with the uh, <laughs> inevitable bad. I don't even know if you want to call this good. Uh, as you can see, I chose to go with a gold interior. Now, the weird thing about this model kit is, as I mentioned earlier, it comes with a fold-down, sort of like a 
station wagon uh, rear seat. So it is actually functional. It does fold down and folds back up. The problem is when you get it in the car, you really can barely get in there to do anything with the seat. I can barely even get my finger in there to, to even touch the seat. So it kind of makes no sense for it to even function like that at all, unless I guess you wanted to put it either up or down. So um, I think I'll leave it since I already got it in there the way it was designed. It's just, um, I don't know, just seems kind of a silly thing that they wasted some time building since it's not like a convertible or anything. I don't know if they made a convertible of this model, which would then uh, sort of make sense. But then I don't think the convertible had this sort of trunk because it would have been like a normal car. So anyway, uh, I'm <laughs> just speculating nonsense. Um, you can't really see the wood grain since I used a light wood paint for the, uh, the details on this. But I did actually do some wood grain details like on the console and on the dash and on the door panels. But since it's gold, it kind of almost blends right in. Not a big deal. Um, everything in here went together fairly, fairly simply. That wasn't, weren't really any issues there. One other thing I noticed though, when I'm doing the license plates, putting the decals on, they're like way too small for the existing license plate frames. So I'm assuming that the decal sheet came way later on this and uh, they made a mistake because I'm sure that the uh, original ones probably fit this frame pretty well. Which kind of screwed me up too because I scuffed up the back a little bit intending for the decal to be able to adhere a little better than to the chrome and uh, now you can kind of see where I scuffed it up around it because the uh, plates are so small. Um, next issue I'm having is uh, this here. The uh, I haven't painted the other side of it. I'm not even sure if you're going to be able to see it anyway, but the uh, radiator support goes in here and in the instructions it shows you there's uh, two tabs, not tabs, but um, there's like supposed to be like a slot with, with two indents on either side that this is supposed to slide up into. Well, there's only one indent mark. Probably can't really see it. But I wasn't sure whether to put it on this side of the indent mark or this side of the indent mark. And it's kind of hard to tell even with the car on the body, I think it's supposed to go more towards the grill. The unfortunate problem is it doesn't fit there. Speaking of the grill, so I'm probably going to have to trim the hell out of that to get it to fit. Speaking of the grill, um, this was like a nightmare to get in here. And uh, I unfortunately, uh, when I was trying to put the bumper in, that's another problem. That's the wrong bumper. The front bumper has like a lip on it right here. And you're supposed to, it's supposed to catch inside there on the lower valance that you're, that's in there already. Which in the instructions you're supposed to put it on afterwards or with the bumper. But I put it on first to paint it. I even test fit beforehand and it seemed like it would work well. But unfortunately this bumper did not even fit in the slot that's provided. It has nothing to do with the valance. It's just the construction of it is just too wide. So I had to trim it like uh, down here on each side until I could get it to fit through the slot. So I finally got it to fit through the slot. Then it won't fit down on top of the valance because of this part that sticks up here. And so I think I'm going to have to shave this off to get it to, because otherwise it's going to sit all cockeyed crooked instead of flat and straight. So that's another problem I'm dealing with. Uh, I had a similar issue with the taillight, getting that to mount in right. It um, fits okay, but not very well. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, 
The glass went in fairly well. Not too many issues there. Um, I did kind of do a quick test fit with the interior, which is what goes in next. And it seems like there's some issues there, like it doesn't want to go up completely straight both sides. So I don't know if I got to shave some here. I already shaved some, but I haven't tested it since I did that. I'm not even sure if that's the problem, but it seems like that's probably what it is. As far as the frame, I haven't finished detailing underneath. I still got to do the exhaust and the rest of the transmission. As you can see, I did like the, uh, the rear axle and stuff. And uh, like the control arms and junk like that. Um, engine went in pretty pretty well. There was no issues there. The um, the rear is a uh, metal axle, but the front I couldn't use it because there's no hole through the engine. Even though they supplied you with two metal axles, so I did actually I did end up having to use those pins. But I knew, well, I didn't know. I, I, I put the pin in and I put the two halves of the wheel together. And just as I suspected, that pin had way too much slop. I mean, it went in so far that there was barely anything sticking out that I could have inserted the, uh, the pin in with. So what I ended up doing was I glued the pin in with just the back of the wheel. And then, since it was pretty easy to get the uh, hollow tires on over the rims. Um, I don't normally build them that way, but some people, they build the rim and then they slide the tire on over. Well, you can't do that with all tires, so. But these ones, I tried it and it was easy, so. Then I glued the outer rim to the inner rim. Unfortunately, this one was one of those ones where there's no ring or anything to center it, so I had to be really careful to get it perfectly you know symmetrical and straight so it wasn't like cockeyed or off center and then those went on pretty simply that was no issue at all and so now they're not loose and they do turn so that was nice so let's see uh any other issues i think that's about it really um i mean there's not a whole lot to the kit to begin with but just these weird issues have kind of kept me from getting it done. It's just like I kind of come and do a little bit and then I go, oh, okay, I got to put it off the side and go do something else for a while because it gets frustrating. Oh, there was one other thing. The, uh, the decals that it came with, I didn't think there was any other decals, but there was one for the, the uh, air cleaner. And I originally just took some paint and painted a ring around that. And then I found the decal as I was cutting the license plate decals out. And I was like, oh, here's a decal for the air cleaner. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit very well. I even used the decal set, but it doesn't want to lay down right. But um, that's just a minor thing. I mean, you don't open the hood too often anyway. Oh, uh, I might as well mention it while I'm on the update thing. One other thing I did find, these rims. I was trying to find these rims so I could see how to detail them. And I could not find a Barracuda with these exact rims. And I was like, why uh, can I not find these rims? So eventually, um, I, I don't remember what I searched for, but I did find these rims. But what it turns out is interesting story. These are what they refer to as recall rims. Kelsey Hayes made these. They were kind of um, new technology, I guess, or whatever. At the time, these are cast aluminum centers with, I believe, if I remember what I read, the, with a steel outer part. And they're supposed to be like a, uh, like a graphite gray color, all in between all these, um, whatever you call it, like the, the holes, the slots. And then there's like what's um, the trim ring it's supposed to be a deep dish trim ring, so it, I mean, they're deeper rims on the, on the inside. You know, you, can, you can't tell really much from the video, but. So I was thinking, how am I going to paint these and then also keep the chrome trim ring? Well, if it was just a small lip trim ring, that would have been easy. I could just go over it with the Molotow chrome pen afterwards. Unfortunately, 
they're like I said, a deep dish trim ring, and there was no way I could tape them off, and it was just way, way too tedious for me to try to go in there and paint with a little brush, all that. So I just left them chrome, and I just detailed the the slots black. I didn't even bother with the hub or the uh, lug nuts because they were already kind of uh, shadowed, uh, you know, because just from the chrome process itself, you know, they don't get down into those little nooks and crannies sometimes very well, so I didn't even bother uh, black washing those. But anyway, that um, was an interesting, they recalled these rims before the cars, well, theoretically before the cars were even sold, and uh, because they were coming apart, <laughs> wheels were falling off. <laughs> and uh, so they're very rare and expensive today and very thought, sought after. In fact, they make reproductions of them now. That's why I had trouble finding this, this rim because they were a recalled rim. So what I'm thinking is this kit probably came out like before or just after this 69 model year Barracuda hit the, uh, the lots because they probably used pre-production information from Chrysler to make the kit and that's why they use these rims. That's why they show up in this kit. And um, I just thought that was kind of interesting. So anyway, I got to do these little details on this thing, get this done, and um, get this uh, in the in the in the rearview mirror. Oh, another thing I did find. Sorry, I just saw this sitting here. These aren't even in the instructions. They give you uh, rearview mirrors. I forgot all about them. I have to still paint them, and they they don't even show them in the instructions at all. But I am going to put them on. So stay tuned for the final reveal. Ugh. Be gone, vile demon. Welcome to the final reveal. This kit was a pain in the you-know-what. So, anyway. <sighs> Where do I start? Well, let's get the box out of the way. I kept putting this kit off and putting it off because I just <laughs> was sick of working on it. Um, I ran into problems with the paint, of course. When don't I? Um, I used a testers or model master or whatever the hell it was. It was a one of their two-part lacquer systems. This is called like GTS Blue Pearl or something like that. I think it's a um, a modern Dodge or Chrysler color. Maybe for the Challenger or something. Anyway, I thought it would look good on this. But then I used the Tester's Clear Coat lacquer on it. And it never really shined very well. And it... Jeez, it almost seemed like it never wanted to dry either. But anyway, so eventually I just ended up doing the... Uh, at the very end, the Pledge Floor Care finish, future finish, whatever you want to call it. Um, which did help. It came out shiny in the end. Um, I did mess up one part trying to do the little rocker molding uh, by hand. I didn't tape it off and I was freehanding it with the Molotel chrome pen and uh, my hand slipped. And So you may notice that on the, the uh, 3D turntable. A lot of problems putting the front bumper in. I had to shave the heck out of it to get it in there. And putting the grills in, a lot of problems with that. The license plates, as you can see, I mentioned earlier, I basically clipped them down and uh, painted the edges up so they would match the size of the decals. On the mirrors, which I mentioned were not even present in the directions at all, uh, what I did was I took some chrome sprue and there's usually like some nice flat parts in there and I cut two pieces to fit painted the mirrors super glued those on they came out good I'm happy with those uh what else went crazy on this I didn't like the underneath but here's what I ended up doing I don't even think I finished it I can't remember I think I just got tired of working on it that's what you got there it does roll 
And you got the seat inside here. It's kind of hard to see. Let me try zooming in here. So let's see if I can show you that. It's not going to be easy. But basically, the folding seat is back here. kind of see it there. I don't want to fold it down all the way because it'd be a little too hard to get it up. I mean, it can, but it it, it uh, rubs a little bit, and, and uh, so I prefer not to push it down all the way and have to get in there and dig it out. But if you want to see inside a little bit, maybe. And let me pop the hood off here. This will be fun because it's a tight fit, so I'm going to have to do it from underneath. There we go. That was a little troublesome. There you can get an idea what the under the hood looks like there with the body all together. Not too bad considering. So, um, I did have some minor issues putting the body to the frame. Nothing, nothing crazy. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't really that bad. Most of the things I had the problems with were the bumpers. Yeah, really, that's about it. I mean, it wasn't as bad as that Mack truck, no, by any means, but it did have its share of issues that's for sure oh one thing I did forget to do I didn't even notice it until I got done you may not notice it too much but I didn't paint the part of the side of the interior bucket in there it's white it's, I didn't realize that was going to show so it didn't get any paint and I already had it together I was like oh screw this I'm not taking it back apart and painting it so Luckily, it's on a part that you don't see too much. It's it's You'd have to really be looking up under there to see it. So, anyhow, it's done. It's okay. Let's close this hood up, and I'll get the turntable out, and uh, we'll be done with this. Mm -hmm.